Welcome back. At this point, you've had the chance to look over the course outline and expectations. I hope that you've reached out for any assistance if needed. If you haven't, please do reach out so I can answer your questions. In today's lesson, we'll discuss two important things. First, we will discuss an important question that you and many students have. What's the difference between macroeconomics and microeconomics? Some of you had to make a choice between the courses. Thank you for choosing to take macroeconomics with me. The majority of you, especially those of you majoring in business, will need to take both. So it's important for us to know the difference between the subjects and how they can help you answer questions. The second thing we will cover today is I will introduce you to what I call the vital signs of the economy and why it's important for us to learn about them. So let's get started with the first point. The difference between micro and macroeconomics is mostly the type of questions that the fields ask. Macroeconomics is the study of the entire economy. It is concerned with aggregate changes in the country. We are concerned in the health of the overall economy and we will use measures like inflation, unemployment, and GDP to measure the well-being of the entire economy. Microeconomics, on the other hand, is concerned with a narrower level of analysis. Here we're asking questions about individuals, businesses, cities. The interest is in identifying how people and businesses make decisions and how those decisions change when factors in the economy change. To get a better idea of the differences, let's look at some of the questions that economists in each of these fields asks. Macroeconomists ask questions like, does immigration help or harm the US economy? Here, the interest is in how the economy as a whole is impacted by new labor entering from outside of the United States. Another question macroeconomists ask, what policies are available to the government during recessions? This semester, we will learn that recessions are bad for the economy. If we're interested in reducing the overall effects of a recession, what tools are available to the government? Another question, is the US debt high? And what are the consequences of that to the US economy? Frequently, you'll hear politicians and journalists talk about the size of the US debt. It is expected that those voting should know about debt and its consequences. We will discuss the US debt this semester and the impact on the US economy, so you can be better informed as a voter. Macroeconomists will also ask, why are some countries wealthy and others still experiencing high level of poverty? In macroeconomics, we're interested in comparing across economies and across time. These international comparisons will allow us to identify why some countries grow wealthy and others don't. Microeconomists, on the other hand, ask questions to do with individual, business, and regional responses to change. For instance, a microeconomist will ask, does increasing the minimum wage change the amount of labor that Kroger hires? In this question, we are asking about Kroger, a single firm, and how it responds to change in wage laws. Another question is, how does increasing income taxes change the labor hours for women? Here, we're interested in seeing how responsive women are to changes in income taxes. Obviously, we can then use that information to compare how men change their behavior. We can also use the same question to ask questions about different segments of the, of the economy. Microeconomists will also ask questions like, how's the price of gasoline determined? A very important question. If you're like me, then you love Chipotle. Have you ever wondered how does Chipotle decide on how many burritos to sell? Well, that decision can be analyzed using microeconomics. Finally, a question that you and I often ask ourselves, how many hours should I work this week? Turns out that that is a microeconomic question. 
To summarize the difference between the two fields, microeconomics is the study of how individual households and firms make decisions and how they interact with one another in markets. Macroeconomics is the study of the economy as a whole. Our goal will be to explain how changes affect the well-being of the country, usually measured by employment, inflation, and GDP. So now you have a better idea about the difference between micro and macro economics. Both provide us with important tools to answer many of the world's questions. I highly recommend that you take both classes. Next, we will discuss the vital signs of the economy. The best way to talk about this is to think about an experience that many of us have. Once a year or more, we head to the doctor for an annual checkup. And although we have different doctors, the experience is roughly the same for all of us. We arrive at the doctor's office, we sign in, then we wait for what seems like forever, then a nurse will pop their head and call you in. They will follow the same exact next steps. They will weigh you, check your temperature, and your blood pressure. Why do they do that? Well, those are the vital signs of your health. Knowing those numbers and how they have changed since your last visit gives the doctor a better idea of any underlying concerns that need to be investigated. The economy also has its own vital signs. Over the next three chapters, we will be discussing GDP, unemployment, and inflation. I think of them as the vital signs of the economy. Knowing what they are and how they are changing can give us a signal about any underlying issues in the economy. It can also give us any idea, an idea if the government should intervene. My goal is for you to be able to understand these numbers and be able to respond to changes so that you can work towards having a better, better economic opportunities. To recap, in this video, we covered the difference between macro and microeconomics, and we introduced the importance of knowing the vital signs of the economy. Reach out to me if you have any questions. I'll see you in the next class.